look back into the past 10 years of football, there will always be room for those you look back onto in disappointment. Players that were supposed to become great, who never lived up to their initial hype or fell off in unimaginable ways. I mean, just right now, as you've heard those two sentences, you probably had like three players come to your mind instantly who fit the description. Well, today I will be using the failed wonder kids of the past to rebuild Crystal Palace, a team who has fallen off massively recently and finds themselves in the relegation battle already. Can this club be rescued by failed wonder kids? Let's find out. Currently sat in the 17th position in the Premier League with a negative goal difference of five and just seven points from the first 10 games. That's not very really good. Crystal Palace in the last season, everyone kept talking about Olise and Eze, the amazing partnership and Mateta, of course. But now this year, things are not looking great. Could be better. This right here is the Crystal Palace squad. They have been lining up in a 3-4-3 or 3-4-2-1 formation lately. And uh, looking at that, obviously it's led by Mateta, supported by the likes of Enketia and Eze and Wharton and such, but obviously, injuries have played a little bit of a role there players like wharton currently are out for crystal palace but looking at this team you can instantly see that it's a good squad it's not a bad team at all specifically considering the fact that they were able to hold on to guehi and bring in players like lacroix and chaloba to replace the likes of anderson who have obviously left towards fulham so i'm seeing this team and i'm thinking we can definitely work with this. But I'm also realizing that this entire squad will be replaced because when we're talking about failed wonder kids, I don't think we have any in here. Maybe Enketia, but wouldn't really say he has failed yet. So how does this work? Every single season, every single transfer window, I'm gonna go in there and find myself a failed wonder kid of the past. And this one, is so special. I really wonder if anyone has actually noticed who this is, but man, am I excited. Every single time we go in and bring in one of these Wonder Kids, failed Wonder Kids, we turn them back to the age that they were at when they had their highest potential, and we also put them on that same rating. Keita Balde Diao. This guy, back in, yes, let me show you, back in FIFA 18, as it says in the top left corner, he was an 82 rated player with 90 potential. Right now, he's actually 70 rated and he plays in Turkey. That's the situation. But we have now brought this man into the team for tons of money because obviously he was a very high rated player back then. 82 rated. That's how he's coming into the team as our new left midfielder and legit the only signing I can make because I have basically spent all my money on this first new transfer into the team. And what's even more ridiculous is the fact that this man doesn't even have a picture anymore. He used to be one of the biggest talents back then, and now he doesn't even have a picture. I mean, if we're talking about failed wonder kid, this man is very high up on the list. At AS Monaco back then, he did have an 82 rating with 90 potential, and we have reinstated that instantly. But that also means right now I don't have cash. I need to move on some players to bring some money back in. This next man you're seeing right there is an attacking midfielder from Barcelona back in the day. He was supposed to be that guy. And Alan Halilovic is a name that only a few of you might remember. In FIFA 16, this guy was incredible. He came in with a 77 overall and 91 potential. Yes, my friends, that's how insane he used to be. But right now, as we speak, in FC25, he's 71 rated, 71 potential, 28 years old. Alan Halilovic, I have truly revived your career now. So now he does come in with that 77 rating. I mean, he kept his play styles. Finesse shot, dead ball, technical, flair, trivela. This is going to be such a fun team to use because so many somewhat failed careers are coming together right now. Halilovic and Balde Dial Keita next to each other. 
This feels amazing again. I remember using these players back in the day. Let me know in the comments down below which wonder kids did you use back in the day in FIFA games that now don't have a high rating or are not even in the game anymore. Like Dele Alli, for example, is not an FC25. This is already way too much fun for me. And this next one was Ryan Gravenberg before... Ravenbash became who he is today. I am talking about a man that used to be an Ajax talent and everyone was talking about him back then. It is, let's see his name, put on the shirt, buddy, Crystal Palace, the Chedley Bazur. Yes, my friends, this guy used to have an 88 potential to his name, but now in FC20, he's only 74 rated with 75 potential at the age of 27. It was time to revive his career. And there he is. Bazour now comes into the team as a center midfielder like he was back in the day. 77 rated. No more defending for you. You're going to be attacking again. The good thing about him, just like with Halilovic, is he has kept a bunch of his play styles. Bruiser, press proven, and the Trivela. The, the Trivela clearly shows he has a bit of spice about him. He's capable of being very, very technical. Right now, he's playing in Turkey as a center back, which is... Sad to see, man. This guy was supposed to be something. This next one, even I forgot about. I didn't even know he had up to 90 potential. This is a goalkeeper named Geronimo Rulli, which a lot of you guys might still remember. I think the last time I saw him play was when he moved to Ajax. And after that, he had to move away straight away. But Rulli was a goalkeeper that actually had an 83 rating with 90 potential at one point, which obviously would have made him one of the best goalkeepers in world football. Instead, he is now going ahead and signing with us. Ruli, we have revived your career as a failed wonder kid. Now, actually, he is playing for Olympique Marseille with a 79 rating the age of 32. So this right now is the final team. An 83 rated Rulli comes in and takes over the goalkeeping position. The defense stays the same because the ones I wanted to buy were way too expensive and my budget at Crystal Palace has run out. Bazour takes over center midfield. Let's move him over to the left. So we have that triangle of failed wonder kids on here. Halilovic, Bazour and Balde Diaw Keita. I really like this concept. I absolutely love a failed Wonder Kids video. So off we go into our first season. Let's see where they finish. The first season with the failed Wonder Kids in the squad and Crystal Palace instantly moves up into the eighth position, which is quite impressive. Liverpool at the top with 79 points though. But all I want to know is, how are the youth talents looking? Or youth talents, I mean, the failed Wonder Kids, I should say. Halilovic up to an 82. Azur, 79. Balde, 86. Really, 80s? Bro, what? What? He came in at an 83, didn't he? Okay, good thing is we have a goalkeeper that is going to be insane forever. And obviously the rest of the team will have to catch up. Now, going into the next season, some tough decisions will have to be made. Some players that are here and part of the starting 11 will be swapped. Ideally, I would like to go and change that defense completely. But for that, I will need a lot of money. And let's see how much I actually get. Before we check that out, though, how many goals, Balde Diaw? Let's see. He had 15. Okay, 15 and 7 from left midfield. That's okay. Nothing extremely impressive, but we'll take it and move on. I still remember to this day how Eric Bailly was the next big thing when it comes to centre-backs in the world of football. Manchester United signing him from Villarreal for lots and lots of money, of course. And back then, he was 82 rated with 90 potential. Yes, that was insane. Now, we're looking at Bailly on a 75 rating back at Villarreal. And things didn't even work out for him at Marseille, I believe. So here he is. He's joining us with an incredible rating of 82 with 90 potential. But I have to admit that did cost me a ton of money. Basically, the majority of my budget has been spent on this. I was given 70 million. It was basically 50 million plus one of our center backs in this deal to make it happen. But he comes in to play alongside Guehi and Richards as well now, who has gone up in his rating. So I kind of feel like maybe I shouldn't be focusing too much on the defense. We'll leave it like that for now. 
and then we'll try and bring in a bit more cash to make a bit more impact in this team with maybe one more transfer. I might have gone ahead and signed by for, for about 50 million, but I have decided to go and sell Dokore for 24.5, Eddie Nketiah for 19 million, Munoz leaves for 17.7, Dean Henderson leaves for 14.5. Sar has left for over 10. Odds on Eduard has returned from his loan deal, has been sold instantly. And so has Will Hughes, leaving us with a budget of 130 million. Yes, a bunch of failed wonder kids are about to join. Time to sign someone who I had a personal experience with as well as a Bayern Munich fan. Renato Sanchez joined us and I thought, wow, we are signing an incredible wonder kid. Someone who, cr who truly could take Bayern Munich's midfield to the next level. Same thing I kind of felt when Gravenbach joined, but Renato Sanchez was a massive back then when he was at Benfica. But... In the season he joined, he was 78 rated with 90 potential. Right now in real life, yep, things have changed. He's actually 77 rated with 78 potential. Basically, his potential now was his rating back then. Now, this obviously pushes out someone like Adam Wharton from the team. I love him. I think he's an exceptional talent, but... The concept of this video is utilizing failed wonder kids and saying failed, failed wonder kid to Adam Morton is disrespectful. Renato Sanchez comes in now at the age of 18, just like back in the day when he joined Bayern Munich. And man, this guy could have been so much. He truly could have been one of the best midfielders out there because in certain games, when you saw him play, you thought this guy's insane. He's amazing. He's the best midfielder. I'm not joking. Certain games, he was insane, but sadly, those certain games only came around, like, five games and a hundred. That's how it used to be. And that's why he pretty much never really made it. But, hey, Renato Sanchez, you're getting a second chance now to becoming one of the best midfielders in the world. They had put a Ballon d'Or clause into this man's contract. Anthony Martial, back when he moved from AS Monaco to Manchester United... Everyone thought this guy could be it. This could be the one. But as you can see right there, he now plays for Athens in Greece at the age of 29 when he should have been one of the best players to actually play the game. He had 82 as his overall with 90 potential back then. Now we're looking at him on a 76 rating and he doesn't even have a picture. That's the reality anthony martial right now and the thing is he had his moments you know there were moments where you thought oh wow this guy is incredible even against top teams but it never really worked out at manchester united did it and let's be real that happened to a ton of players recently you know over the last 10 years so many players join manchester united and kind of fall apart and then when they move away somehow they can actually restart their career and do better and stuff like that but Martial, man, he really was supposed to be Mbappe before Mbappe became him. But yeah, anyways, he's joining us as an 82 rated player right now. He does have play styles, finesse shot, chip shot, technical. Anthony Martial, you're going to be leading the line from now on. Now, this next one was probably one that always had super high potential, but only played for the wrong teams. It's Anderson Talisca. This guy was insane like he was so freaking good that everyone thought oh he's about to make a big move but no he decided to go play in china now he's playing saudi arabia alongside ronaldo in the same team at al nasser but back then he had an 83 rating with 90 potential this guy was supposed to be the next big thing and just like oscar for example the brazilian never really made that move that really would have made sense for a player of his caliber. So right now, we're looking at him joining us at an 80... I think it was an 83 rating. Yes, an 83 rating with 90 potential, taking over the position of Eze. Eze has now left us, but Taliska is here to support Anthony Martial. Taliska, for me, has always been very, very good on the ball. Amazing in terms of shooting, passing, finesse shot, power header, Trivella, acrobatic... All those play styles are part of his game, but I always thought he just lacked that one big step to a big club to really prove himself. It seems like he has really only gone for the money, which 
I get. It's fine. So this is how the team is looking now. And I am fully aware that we're still lacking two center backs and a new right midfielder. But my budget is now emptied. And also, I am aware that I won't be able to fit in every single failed wonder kit of the past into this team. So if you guys would have put any other players in there, let me know which ones they would have been in the comments. Despite bringing in those top talents, we only improved by one position. We are now up into the seventh spot with Crystal Palace. 65 points on us. Man City have won the league title. FA Cup, we are not in it. Carabao Cup, Man City won that as well. So you can clearly see there is a bit of domination going on here. But obviously, the ultimate goal is to win trophies ourselves. And looking at the squad now, we see Martial on an 84. Halilovic, 84. Taliska straight away up to an 87. Raksaki holding it down in that right midfield position, which I appreciate. Renato Sanchez and Bazur looking solid in that midfield. And obviously in defense, we have uh, an incredible goalkeeper, an amazing centre-back and also Guehi who is doing really well. And a lot will still change moving forward. I am continuously going to be trying to bring in more and more players and even bench players. Yes, there I said it. <laughs> that is something I'm going to be focusing on as well because I need this team to be as strong as possible. And there it is. Taliska, 32-8. Mateta stealing the playtime of Martial, even though he's lower rated. Okay, we'll have to fix that in the next season. But Taliska coming up with 40 goal contributions in Premier League football shows what really could have been. Sadly, it was time. Adam Wharton now leaves us for 55 million and Mateta goes for 34, leaving us with a nice little budget of nearly 200 million. It's a tiny budget, but I think I'll be okay with it. Could I do a failed Wonder Kids video without signing Anthony? I'm sorry, but that is not possible. This guy might be the biggest waste of money that Manchester United has done in previous years. This is insane. He was at one point at Ajax, an 89 potential player with an 81 rating. And at Ajax, I gotta be real, he actually looked solid. He looked like an actual decent player. But right now at Manchester United, he has been dropped down to a 77 rated player with 81 potential. Anthony is not the same anymore, but he could be great again with us. So Raksaki, I'm sorry, but Anthony is coming in at the age of 23. I don't know why. I think I wanted to make him 21, the same he was when he was at Ajax. I'll fix that. But uh, he's coming in with the finesse shot, technical flair, trickster. Maybe somehow I can actually turn him into a world beater. That is what he was supposed to become. What Manchester United thought he could actually become. And let's be real, they spent tons of money on him. I think it was like 80 million pounds or something like that. Still, just incredible. <laughs> the fact that he is someone that most fans would like to get rid of now at Manchester United just shows you. Yet another transfer down the drain. When we talk about defenders, we got to talk about the hyped up Italian defenders of the previous years. Right now, we are looking at a man that in FIFA 16 was one of the highest potential center backs in the game. We are talking about the man himself, Juventus' talent, Daniele Rugani. He now signs with our team as the new number two of the squad, an Italian has been welcomed. Back in the day, he was 78 rated with 88 potential. Right now, as a 29-year-old, he has a 76 rating with 76 potential. So clearly things haven't really worked out. So he's going to be taking over the right centre-back position for us. Rugani comes in at six foot four, but obviously with a lower rating, 78 rated as we speak. Where he I'm going to have to take you out to really complete this fully failed Wonder Kid starting 11. I don't know if you can recognize him right there straight away, but this was one of the highest profile players. Samuel Umtiti was incredible. The former Lyon centre-back talent that at some point end up playing for Barcelona came in with a rating of an 87 with 92 potential at the height of his career. Now, when he's 30 years old, we're looking at a man that should be in his prime, but actually is 75 rated. And I know a couple of unfortunate things have happened to this man to be in this situation, but Umtiti now comes in as a marquee signing 
into our team and I truly do believe that this guy can take us to that next level. Wehi, I'm going to have to sell you now. Umtiti takes over and you know what? Just for the sake of it, I'm going to give him the captaincy for now. He comes in with that 87, that experience of playing for Barcelona, the experience of playing for the France national team. Cool, I'm actually stuck. Oh, that's great. Nice face, Johnny. Anyways, let me get rid of myself then. I'll fix that in a second. But uh, 87 rated. Welcome to the team, Umtiti. Well, my team is looking incredible at the end of this season with Ruli up to a 90 rating, which obviously was his potential. That's huge. And... Kaliska up to a 91, Martial on an 88, Balde on a 90. It is actually mad that these two don't have an actual picture in the game, but midfield is getting better. Anthony up to an 84 rating, Rugani 83. And this is the end of the season. And for whatever reason, I cannot go into the league standings. It just doesn't work. So I'm basically just sat there not knowing where we actually finished this season. But what I do know is that we lost the Conference League final against AS Roma. We could have won a European title, but we didn't. And I'm desperately hoping that the standings will be back next season. I need to know where I'm going. I mean, come on, EA. We're getting the silliest of glitches now. But hey, at least I get to check out the stats here, right? So, ooh, Martial with 53 goal contributions. Taliska, 24 and 8. Halilovic, 24 and 11, outdoing his attacking midfield partner. Balde with the 7 and 7. Franca coming in and helping us out a little bit. Anthony with 2 and 2. Four goal contributions in a season. Well done, bud. I'm just seeing it now. We actually finished first in the Premier League. What the hell? Can I go to the standings? I get to see it. We actually finished first. Crystal Palace with the failed one. The kids have won their first Premier League title. FA Cup, we didn't win. Carabao Cup, we also didn't win. That's okay, though, because we are now English champions. Crystal Palace, congratulations. You've done it with the Wonder Kids, but the failed ones. But this doesn't mean we're done here. We still have so much to go for. Champions League footy. Next up is another French lad. This, my friends, is Awar, the man that was always supposed to become just a great midfielder. Someone that could control the midfield for many, many teams and some top teams, most importantly. But at one point, he had an 80 rating with 90 potential. That was Awar, but things changed. Now he's 26 years old, and instead of playing in the top leagues, he has moved over to Al Ittihad. He's 75 rated with 78 potential. That is today's Awar. And with that signing, I'm starting to bring in some great backups into this team, which is because obviously that's going to be quite important for us. I'm actually quite happy about the fact that we already have a couple of decent-ish backups here, but Awar is basically like Ryan Cherky, right? Cherky has always been known for being a massive talent for years, ever since he was like 16. Awar was always at Olympique Lyon. People thought at some point he's going to make that big step, but it never came around. Actually, he's now Algerian. I remember he used to be French in the game, so I guess he has changed his allegiance right there, which probably makes sense because there's no chance he's going to play for the French national team anytime soon. Now, this next one used to be mad skillful. I'm talking about a player from the Netherlands that used to play for PSV Eindhoven, and his name is Mohamed Ihattaren. Just like Martial and Balde Diaw Keita, not even a picture of this guy at this stage, but back then he used to be a 70 rated player with 88 potential at the height of his skills when it came to FIFA. But right now, when we look at him, he's a 70 rated player with 75 potential. Still 22 though, which actually kind of shocks me. So there is still a chance he's still playing in the Eredivisie. And I have just checked in all his years of playing football on the highest level, this man Ihatarin has only gotten five goal contributions. So he probably shouldn't be too surprised that he is now faceless, 70 rated, and probably not necessarily looking to become one of the best in the world as he was kind of expected to be. The next man walking in is a striker that I used to love in FIFA back in the day. This, my friends, is Myron Boadu or Miron, however you want to pronounce his name. This guy was one of the fastest strikers you could use back in the day. And talking about back in the day, things obviously changed. He used to be a 74 rated player with 88 potential. 
Now, he's a 72 rated player with 78 potential. Still has the chance to become great, but right now he's playing for Bochum, who are having their historically worst start into the Bundesliga season ever. However, he's joining us as a backup to Anthony Martial at that 74 rating with two playstyles attached to him, which could be quite useful when it comes to being a super sub. Guess what? We did win the Premier League title once, right? Let's win it again. Crystal Palace ahead of Liverpool, ahead of Manchester City. Failed Wonder Kids? No more. Successful Wonder Kids. That's what we have in this team right now. And let me tell you something else. We're in the final of the Champions League against Manchester City as well. In the round of 16, this team got past... Oh, I hate this. I hate when that happens. Stop. In the round of 16, it was Sporting. In the quarterfinals, it was Liverpool. In the semifinals, PSG. And now Manchester City. All right, so... Let's see the team that has pulled this off, man. This team of uh, failed Wonder Kids. There are so many amazing ones from back in the day as well that just aren't in FC25 anymore. But these are the ones that we found. And I got to say, it is quite Manchester United heavy with Martial, with Anthony, with Eric Bailly right there. And then we obviously have a bunch of players from Barca as well with the likes of Halilovic in there. Uh, saying a bunch is actually wrong. Halilovic is in there, but I did see a bunch of other former Barcelona players that could have also been in this video. But um, this is just an incredible lineup. Even Anthony is up to an 87 at this stage. Renato Sanchez, 90 rated. Rugani, 87, caught up to the rest. Bailly on a 91 rating. Just overall an insane, insane team that I can't wait to use, even though the formation that I have right here is one that I really, really struggle with. But Anthony Martial, I can't believe I'm saying this, I cannot wait to use you in this upcoming game. We're looking at 38 goals and 5 assists right there from him. Balde with 28 and 7. <laughs> Taliska 17 and 12. Alilovic 15 and 19. And Anthony coming up with over 10 goal contributions. Can you believe it? I don't believe this! So as we step into this game, let me tell you a little story. I already played this game up until the 71st minute because here's the deal. Manchester City took the lead, made it 1-0 with Savinho. I came back, made it 1-1. Then they scored another one, made it 2-1 for themselves. And I came back and made it 2-2. At that stage, my PC just decided, hey, you know what? That program that controls your fans and makes sure that the thing doesn't overheat, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it without you knowing of it. And all of a sudden in the 71st minute, my recording and also the game itself all crashed because it overheated. I could have boiled an egg over my PC at that stage. But anyways, at least now I know I need to take care of Savinho first. He was the one that scored the first goal and he's the one ruining my defense right now. Savinho, please stop. Thank you very much. Also, I can tell you right now, this formation absolutely sucks. I struggle with it so badly. Most importantly, because my right midfielder and left midfielder are barely ever involved in attacking. Anthony and Baldediao Keita are just defenders in this formation. Alant. Good steal by Bazur. Don't you just give it back into him. He could have easily scored. Rodrigo should have taken a shot. Savinho. Off he goes, loses the ball. Good work. Halilovic aiming for Martial straight away. Anthony Martial lobs the keeper. Why? Why am I lobbing the keeper? That's going to cost me. I know it already. Renato Sanchez consistently chasing. Rodrigo. Good pass. Savinho, 1-0. It's like it's programmed, man. The first game I played, he was the first one to score as well. Savinho finds his way through. Manchester City make it 1-0. And that one chance I had with Martial, not scoring it, has already cost me. 76 minutes in, time for change. I'm gonna take off Bazur, bring on Awar, and Boadu plays down the left now. Boadu, good pass. Anthony Martial gets past one. Anthony Martial, please, please. I need this, yes! Another comeback for Crystal Palace. It's Martial running through and making it 1-1. 
Oh, mate, this game is so tough. I think it's because I also enabled competitor mode in my My Player series. And I think it carried over into my regular career modes as well. I didn't know it was turned off. But ever since it's been on, the games have been so much harder. Ultimate difficulty with competitor mode and player base difficulty on. And also, simulation playstyle is no joke on this game. We're going into extra time, aren't we? We are. Slight change to the formation. Boadu moves into the camp position. Halilovic moves over to left midfield. That way we can have Boadu attack it a little bit more. And not care about defending too much. Because that is something that is holding me back so much with this formation. And it looks like they subbed off Haaland. Which could be a really good thing for me. Uh-oh. I don't like this. Diao shooting. 120th minute. Right before we go into penalties, Manchester City gets yet another chance. And they get another one. And now we're going into those penalties, man. What the hell is going on? I'm going into so many penalty shootouts lately. We're going to go ahead and take these now. Failed Wonder Kids. Can they succeed? Anthony Martial. First penalty is a success. Vitinha scores. Taliska, one of the best takers here in our team, makes it look easy. Memphis Depay, who could have also been considered one for the team, has scored. As now Awar, who has been subbed on, gets his chance and it's saved. Of course it's saved. Why wouldn't it be saved? Savinho is not saved. Really? Really? I did the perfect thing there. Umtiti smacks it. Perfect pen. Ederson. Ederson, please. Yes, Ruli. Finally, he saves one for the team. Halilovic. Top right again. We're back into it. Zahir Emery. Going left. I knew it. Mind games. Ruli has saved us again. The Champions League trophy belongs to the failed wonder kids. They have won the double this season. I truly believe that the main thing that held this team back was the fact that I obviously chipped one of the big chances I had. But most importantly, the fact that this formation absolutely sucks for me. I can't deal with it. 3-4-2-1, I felt like in FC24 was a good one. But in this game, I cannot handle it, man. So I'm just glad that I managed to win this trophy in the end. It was very tough against Manchester City. Competitor mode makes it even harder now. And from this point on, every single rebuild that we do is going to be a madness. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you did enjoy the video, please make sure to subscribe. Tons of you guys watching these videos are not members or subscribed to this channel. So I'll see you on the next one. Take care and peace.